Hi everyone, happy Monday, I hope you're doing well. I would like to get us back into Charlotte's Web today. We're going to be reading chapter 11 called The Miracle. If you remember in chapter 10, the end of the chapter um, was when Charlotte was working on her web and it said that she was taking out some of the things on the inside to add something new. Remember, she is also trying to um, save Wilbur from being um, killed by the farmers. So she promised him that she would do something for him. Um, so let's see what she does. This is chapter 12, The Miracle. Excuse me, chapter 11. The next day was foggy. Everything on the farm was dripping wet. The grass looked like a magic carpet. The asparagus patch looked like a silver forest. On foggy mornings, Charlotte's web was truly a thing of beauty. This morning, each thin strand was decorated with dozens of tiny beads of water. The web glistened in the light and made a pattern of loveliness and mystery, like a delicate veil. Even Lurvy, who wasn't particularly invested in beauty, noticed the web when he came in with the pig's breakfast. He noted how clearly it showed up, and he noted how big and carefully built it was. And then he took another look down and saw something that made him set his pail down. There in the center of the web, neatly woven in block letters, was a message. It said, some pig. Lurvy felt weak. He brushed his hand across his eyes and stared harder at Charlotte's web. I'm seeing things, he whispered. He dropped to his knees and uttered a short prayer. Then, forgetting all about Wibbo's breakfast, he walked back to the house and called Zuckerman. I think you'd better come down to the pig pen, he said. What's the trouble, said Mr. Zuckerman. Anything wrong with the pig? Not exactly, said Lurvy. Come and see for yourself. The two men walked silently down to Wilbur's yard. Lurvy pointed to the spider's web. Do you see what I see, he asked. Zuckerman stared at the writing on the web. Then he muttered the words, some pig. Then he looked at Lurvy. Then they both began to tremble. Charlotte, sleepy after the last night's excursions, smiled as she watched. Wilbur came and stood directly under the web. Some pig, muttered Lurvy in a low voice. Some pig, whispered Z Mr. Zuckerman. They stared and stared for a long time at Wilbur. Then they stared at Charlotte. You don't suppose that spider, began Mr. Zuckerman. But he shook his head and didn't finish the sentence. Instead, he walked solemnly back up to the house and spoke to his wife. Edith, something has happened, he said in a weak voice. He went to the living room and sat down, and Mrs. Zuckerman followed. I've got something to tell you, Edith, he said. You better sit down. Mrs. Zuckerman sank into her chair. She looked pale and frightened. Edith, he said, trying to keep his voice steady, I think you had best be told that we have a very unusual pig. So here's the web. See how she wrote the letter some pig in there? A look of complete bewilderment came over Mrs. Zuckerman's face. Homer Zuckerman, what in the world are you talking about, she said. This is a very serious thing, Edith, he replied. Our pig is completely out of the ordinary. What's unusual about him, asked Mrs. Zuckerman, who was beginning to recover from her scare. Well, I don't really know yet, said Mr. Zuckerman, but we have received a sign, Edith, a mysterious sign. A miracle has happened on this farm. There is a large spider web in the doorway of the barn cellar, right over the pig pen. And when Lurby went to feed the pig this morning, he noticed that the web was... He noticed the web because it was foggy, and you know how a spider web looks very distinct in fog? And he, and right sprang in the middle of the web were the words, some pig. The words were woven right into the web. They were actually part of the web, Edith. I know, because I had to go down there and see them. It says, some pig, just as clear as clear can be. There is no mistake about it. A miracle has happened, and a sign has occurred here on earth, right here on this farm, and we have no ordinary pig. Well, said Mrs. Zuckerman, it seems to me that you're a little off. It seems to me that we have no ordinary spider. Oh, no, said Mr. Zuckerman. It's the pig that's unusual. It says so, right there in the middle of the web. Maybe so, said Mrs. Zuckerman, but just the same. I intend to give a good look at that spider. It's just a common gray spider, said Zuckerman. They got up, and together they walked down to Wilbur's yard. You see, Edith, it's just a common gray spider. Wilbur was pleased to receive so much attention. Lurvy was standing there, and Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman, all three, stood there for about an hour, reading the words on over and over again. 
and watching Wilbur. Charlotte was delighted with the way her trick was working. She sat without moving a muscle and listened to the conversations of the people. When a small fly blundered into the web just beyond the word pig, Charlotte dropped quickly down, rolled a fly up, and carried it out of the way. After a while, the fog lifted. The web dried off and the words didn't show up so plainly. The Zuckermans and Lurvy walked back to the house. Just before they left the pig pen, Mr. Zuckerman took one last look at Wilbur. You know, he said in an important voice, I've thought all along that that pig of ours was an extra good one. He's a solid pig. That pig is as solid as they come. You notice how solid he is around the shoulders, Lurvy? Sure, sure I do, said Lurvy. I've always noticed that pig. He's quite a pig. He's long and he's smooth, said Mr. Zuckerman. That's right, said Lurvy. He's as smooth as they come. He's some pig. When Mr. Zuckerman got back to the house, he took off his work clothes and put on his best suit. Then he got into his car and drove to his minister's house. He stayed there for an hour and explained to the minister that a miracle had happened on the farm. So far, said Mr. Zuckerman, only four people on the earth know about the miracle. Myself, my wife, Edith, my hired man, Lurvy, and you. Don't tell anyone else, said the minister. We don't know what it means yet, and perhaps if I give it some thought, I can explain it in my sermon next Sunday. There can be no doubt that you have a most unusual pig. I intend to speak about it in my sermon and point out the fact that this community has been visited by with a wonderful animal. By the way, does the pig have a name? Why, yes, said Mr. Zuckerman. My little niece calls him Wilbur. She's a rather queer child, full of notions. She raised the pig with a bottle and brought him when and I bought him when he was a month old. He shook hands with the minister and left. Secrets are hard to keep. Long before Sunday came, the news spread all over the county. Everybody knew that a sign had appeared on the spider's web at the Zuckerman's place. Everybody knew that the Zuckerman's had a wonderful pig. People came from miles and miles and looked at Wilbur and read the words on Charlotte's web. The Zuckerman's driveway was full of cars and trucks in morning till night, from Fords to Chevys and Buick Roadmasters to GMC pickups and Plymouths and Sawbakers and pa Parrocks and DeSotos and Ultimobiles with rocket engines and Jeep station wagons and Pontiacs. The news of the wonderful pig spread cheer up into the hills and farmers came rattling down with their buggies and buckboards to stand there for an hour on hour staring at Wilbur's pen, pen admiring the miraculous animal. All said that they had never seen such a pig before in their lives. So there's all the people lined up to go see them. When Fern told her mother that Avery had tried to hit the Zuckerman spider with a stick, Mrs. Arable was so shocked that she sent Avery to bed without supper as punishment. In the days that followed, Mr. Zuckerman was so busy entertaining visitors that he neglected his farm work. He wore his good clothes all of the time now, got right into them as soon as he got up in the morning. Mrs. Zuckerman prepared special meals for Wilbur. Lurvy shaved and got a haircut, and his principal farm duty was to feed the pig while the people looked on. Mr. Zuckerman ordered Lurvy to increase Wilbur's feedings to three times a day to four times a day. The Zuckermans were so busy with visitors that they forgot about the other things on the farm. The blackberries got ripe. Mrs. Zuckerman failed to put any of the in the blackberry jam. The corn needed hoeing, and Lurvy didn't find time to hoe it. On Sunday, the church was full. The minister explained the miracle. He said that the words on the spider's web proved that human beings must always be on the watch for the comings of wonders. All in all, the Zuckerman's pig pen was in the center of the attraction. Fern was happy for she felt that Charlotte's trick was working and that Wilbur's life would be saved. But she found that the barn was not nearly as pleasant. Too many people. She liked it better when she could be alone there with her friends, the animals. Okay, let's move on now to chapter 12, the meeting. One evening, a few days after the writing had appeared on Charlotte's web, the spider called a meeting with all of the animals in the barn cellar. I shall begin by calling roll. Wilbur, here, said the pig. Gander, here, 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 said the gander. You sound like three ganders, muttered Charlotte. Why can't you just say here? Why do you have to repeat everything? It's my idio, idio, idiosyncrasy, replied the gander. Goose, said Charlotte. Here, 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 said the goose. Charlotte glared at her. Goslings, one through seven. Beep, 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 be
This is getting to be quite a meeting, said Charlotte. Anyone would think that I had three ganders, three geese, and 21 goslings. Sheep, yeah, answered the sheep altogether. Lambs, yeah, answered the lambs altogether. Templeton, no answer. Templeton, still no answer. Well, we are all here except for the rat, said Charlotte. I guess we can proceed without him. Now, all of you have must notice what has been going on here the last few days. The message I wrote in my web, praising Wilbur, has been received. The Zuckermans have fallen for it, and so has everyone else. Zuckerman thinks Wilbur is an unusual pig, and therefore he won't want to kill him and eat him. I dare say my trick will work, and Wilbur's life can be saved. Hooray! cried everybody. Thank you so much, said Charlotte. Now, I called this meeting in order to get suggestions. I need a few ideas for the web. People are getting sick of reading the words, some pick. If anyone can think of another message or remark, I'll be glad to weave it into the web. Any suggestions for a new slogan? How about Pig Supreme? asked one of the lambs. No good, said Charlotte. It sounds like a rich dessert. How about terrific, terrific, terrific? said the goose. Cut down on that to one terrific, and it will do very nicely, said Charlotte. I think terrific might impress the Zuckermans. But Charlotte, said Wilbur, I'm not terrific. That doesn't make a particle of difference, replied Charlotte. Not a particle. People believe almost anything that they see in print. Does anyone here know how to spell terrific? I think, said the gander, it's T double E double R double R double I double F double I double C C C C C. What kind of acrobat do you think I am, said Charlotte in disgust. I would have to have St. Vitus dance to weave a word like that into my web. Sorry, 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 said the gander. Then the old sheep spoke up. I agree that there is some, that there should be something new written on the web if Wilbur's life is to be saved. And if Charlotte needs help finding the words, I think she can get help from our friend Templeton. The rat visits the dump regularly and has access to old magazines. He can tear out bits of advertisements and bring them up here to the barn cellar so that Charlotte can have an idea of something to copy. Good idea, said Charlotte, but I'm not sure Templeton will be willing to help. You know how he is, always looking out for himself, never thinking of another fellow. I bet I can get him to help, said the old sheep. So there's everyone meeting with Charlotte. I'll appeal to his baser instincts, which he has plenty. Here he comes now. Everyone keep quiet while I put up Put the matter up with him. The rat entered the barn the way he always did, creeping a claw close to the wall. What's up? He asked. Seeing the animals assembled, we're holding a director's meeting, replied the old sheep. We'll break it up, said Templeton. Meetings bore me. And the rat began to climb a rope and hung against the wall. Look, said the old sheep. Next time you go to the dump, Templeton, bring back clippings from a magazine. Charlotte needs new ideas of what she can write for messages in her web to save Wilbur's life. Let him die, said the rat. I should worry. You'll worry all right when next winter comes, said the sheep. You'll worry all right in the zero mornings when, in January, when Wilbur is dead and nobody comes here with a nice pail of warm slop to pour into the trough. Wilbur's leftover food is your chief source of supply, Templeton. You know that. Wilbur's food is your food. Therefore, Wilbur's destiny is your destiny, and they are closely linked. If Wilbur is killed and his trough stands empty day after day, you will grow thin and you will look right through to your stomach and see objects on the other side. Templeton's whiskers quivered. Maybe you're right, he said gruffly. I'm making a trip to the dump tomorrow afternoon. I'll bring back a magazine clipping if I can find one. Thanks, said Charlotte. The meeting is now adjourned. I have a busy evening ahead of me. I've got to tear out my web and write the word terrific. Wilbur blushed, but I'm not terrific, Charlotte. I'm just about an average pig. You're terrific as far as I'm concerned, replied Charlotte sweetly, and that's what counts. You're my best friend, and I think you're sensational. Now stop arguing and go get some sleep. Okay. So Charlotte is going to be looking for suggestions on what she should write in the web to impress the Zuckermans and the people to make sure that um, Wilbur's life is saved. So tomorrow when we read Chapter 13, we'll see how the terrific message goes, and we'll see if Templeton brings back any other ideas. See you tomorrow. Bye.